welcome to The Hookup on music featuring your main man, Tony the Sugar Baggy. Hello, everybody. My name is Tony, and I am the Sugar Baggy, and we are here at episode 74. Wow, wow, wow. Uh, I'm excited to be here. Day four of me not having any caffeine, no soda pop. One of my biggest addictions. I'm cutting it back and to replace it, more good music. That's why we are here tonight to share and talk good music, no matter the variety, the genre, the genre, the gener, the genre, the genre. You know, I never know how to pronounce that name, but welcome. Thank you for joining me tonight, uh, today, during the day, whenever you happen to be watching this. But today is Wednesday. Uh, the 19th of June. It is super, super hot out there. So let's uh, let's keep the let's, let's let's keep the heat going um, in in a way that will keep us cool, but keep us really hot. And good stuff. So let's see what we got today. Okay, we got some new releases. Okay, you might not have expected it, but the Decemberists. We've been talking about their new album has just been released. As it ever was, so it will be. It is here um, for your listening pleasure, and I've take a I've I've went ahead and I've taken a listen to it, and it is definitely really what you're expecting from a band that is just loaded with lots and lots of goodies, um, lots of good songs, lots of different sounding songs, lots of songs that sound like the band. Um, a song that's been stuck in my head a lot is the song called "Oh No." If you uh, remember a band a long time ago uh, entitled the Squirrel Nut Zippers then you may uh, hear a little of that in this track, uh, Oh No, by the Decemberists. But again, Decemberists are back, and they are, and they have a new album. And I would say go ahead and check it out for, for many different reasons, that being if you like music, uh, we are here to uh, show you lots and lots of different stuff to listen to, and this is one of it. Um, but uh, that being said, we've already talked about Burial Ground here on the show, which was uh, the very first single off of the album, but you going through the, uh, album, um, really, really, really good stuff. 13 minutes, um, not 13 minutes album, 13 songs. Uh, the album is an hour and seven minutes long, which is, um, exactly really 67 minutes. It sounds like a good release. It sounds like it's a, a good ride. A lot of their <clears throat> albums have themes intertwined. Um, if you are a, if you are not a fan or haven't listened to much of their music, going back through their albums, um, the Crane Wife, Picaresque, uh, the Hazards of Love, the King is Dead, what a terrible world, what a beautiful world. That is their last. Uh, they're 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 in 2015. Um, kind of a, some new sounds going on there. I'll be your girl is their last album. Almost made that. Uh, almost made that kind of a little bit of a mistake, but corrected myself um but uh the decemberists though on their last uh, couple albums have been incorporating some synth and this uh, album it looked like they got a little bit back to their roots which uh i like any band that takes chances and i like any bands that release good music and the decemberists are definitely one of them um releasing um brand um new music uh, mavis staples also has got a brand new song out there uh the staples singers if it has been a long time since you've listened to their 60s and 70s output i would do that but mavis staples a really really excellent uh musician who i've stated before on the show i got to see at farm aid for my uh, wonderful um my wedding bachelor party uh, do you have any other kind of bachelor parties but wedding kind but that being said um check her new song out worthy um, it does not sound dated. It sounds awesome. It sounds like Mavis is hot on the prowl uh, to release some really good music, and we are here for it here at the Hookup on Music. Um, also, a new artist, uh, what well, kind of new? They've been around since 2017, but new to around the, these parts on the Hookup, uh, Irish post-punk band uh, from Dublin called Fountains DC. Was not expecting to hear uh, this, but you know what? It sounds really good in that hot heat outside. Really good stuff right there. I'm digging deeper. As last week stated, I like to uh, put my toes in the water and then we really go in deep heavily there. Um, it is a five-piece band who have released 
three uh three albums currently the fourth one being um the song you hear right there romance is going to be um starburster is going to be off that the song you're hearing right there and that's going to be off of their new album romance so it's going to be really really interesting to hear that and uh like always we really like sharing new releases uh our new artists uh old artists anyone any artist releasing some music we're going to talk about it here on the hookup on music if you out there have anything that to share with us please always do so i like checking out all different kinds of music it is always really good especially to uh to widen those uh, varieties which we always state here is what we're our, our purposes are so if uh we're going to miss something. You're going to have to let us know. But we're, we're always looking out, trying to look out. Also, uh, going on this past uh, weekend was a little bit of the uh, Bonnaroo variety, Bonnaroo 2024. Um, a lot of different, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, artists um, that uh, you might not suspect on Bonnaroo lineups. Although Bonnaroo is starting to turn a little bit more into Lollapalooza, a little bit more over-encompassing. Um, many different sounds, which isn't a problem. Um, but again, you got to really mix it up. And sometimes they don't do that 100%. But looking at this list of our amazing artists that was at this show, um, Thursday they had uh, Guar. <laughs> you know, um, Friday you have uh, Post Malone, you know, and Larry Clark Jr. You know, you talk about two opposites right there and the Mars Volta. You know, you're going through all different kinds of sounds. Um, Saturday, Red Hot Chili Peppers and the Cage the Elephant um, played, which, again, you know, Chili Peppers, Bonnaroo could be good. But, again, looking at their, their set list, it's, 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 it's cool to see them always throw in some songs and throw in a lot of new different stuff. And um, when they played the Bonnaroo um, this past – this is – well, this past weekend, it was really, 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 really hot out there. And, uh, you know, that was one of the complaints I heard by some of the people that were there. I did have a good friend that went. He uh, stated that he probably will never go back again. But, uh, you know, the Chili Peppers are, uh, you know, the thing about them is that they're kind of, they're looking through their their, their set list. They, they switch some stuff up okay they and they add some songs here and there which is which is always cool and you get to hear some of the songs that uh you 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 have become uh, known to hear fr from the chili peppers and then at bonnaroo um seeing that they played soul to squeeze was uh definitely really really cool um i, I like seeing them um dig a little bit deeper you know i like them singing dig, playing a little song called me and my friends off the uplift mofo party plan album which is something that I definitely uh, like to see. Just and I like Dirt, um, great song off of Californication. Like them playing a little bit more of the deeper stuff, but I do understand that they have to play the songs because they are headlining a huge festival that people are familiar with, like Under the Bridge and By the Way, and and, and of course you you know you're not gonna um, snow hey oh you're not gonna really um, miss out not playing that and can't stop another song that is just definitely going to have to be played because it definitely gets everyone um going and it did at this Bonnaroo. But uh again, John Batiste also played Saturday. John Batiste just had a show at the Salt Shed that my cousin went to and said that it was um I didn't hear what he said because because I just saw him in the pictures. I haven't talked to him yet since he went. So I don't want to tell you that he said it was good. I'm sure it was though by looking at the pictures. He had a big smile on his face. Um really cool uh and then you go into uh Sunday which was a little bit where I was a little where I was you could tune into all of this if you happen to have a uh, Hulu but again uh, Megan the Stallion, um Jason Isabel and Fred again all there Carly Rae Jepsen playing um, you know, you're looking for maybe a string cheese incident or a mo or something like that. Possibly on that day, you're you're not getting that anymore. Um, here, you're getting again like more of they're they're capitalizing on a, <clears throat> a more of a what I would deem to be a uh, what Lollapalooza is doing. So, if you're into that or not, um, again, the reviews have been out and it's it was it was hot. You know, I mean, how can you be out there in that sun? Um, but you know what? Uh, people were uh, 16 ounce liquid death water can is uh, was six bucks out there. So that's uh, very, very interesting. 
Um, but again, you're going to be wanting to drinking a lot of them to stay hydrated. Um, lots of different jams, though. Um, but some of these artist names, Bad, Bad, Not Good, had to check them out just basically based on that name right there. Um, but uh, as, as spoken, you know, these bands want to jam out. A lot of electronics, a lot of electronic um, going on. Um, at the festival this year, which is uh, Pretty Lights, who I've uh, seen. Pretty Lights, not not a bad not a bad gig if you're looking into to that kind of stuff. Um, uh, some really cool. Uh, what I like are some of the more smaller um, underground in the tents. This band Geese played. Um, might be worth you checking out. But again, it's hot, and when you're when you're when you're getting ready to go out there and see artists like Brittany Howard. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's keep in mind, you got to stay, you got to stay cool. But uh, tonight we wanted to uh, go in a little bit on some drummers. We wanted to take a look on some drummers and uh, well, see kind of, well, how this all works and uh, we'll not see how it all works, but just kind of honor some of some greats here. And there's millions and millions and millions and millions and millions of great drummers. And we're only going to have some time here to, to, to whittle off some. So let's, let's get started. Man, when I think of Ginger Baker, I think of Cream, I think of Blind Faith. I also think of a lot, a lot of of his solo work that he was involved with. Uh, Ginger Baker's Air Force. Um, if you get a chance to check that out, um, but just definitely a, a drummer that uh, you know who was around eighty years on this planet, and his style it, it had just so many different, different, different things going on from jazz and, and, and in the seventies, really a lot of African rhythms. Um, and you kind of start to hear that going on, uh, some of that cream, um, um, stuff that he was in in blind faith. But again, that was a little bit more rocking and, and just, just interesting to see him, um, you know, get started even in the grand bond organization. You're like, who's the grand bond organization. They were, uh, just a, another, just a, a band that was in the sixties, from uh, 63 pretty much to 70. Um, they did take some years off there in between, but uh, again, uh, G um, Ginger Baker, you know, bassist Jack Bruce from Cream came from that too. But again, when I think Ginger Baker, again, I think of a lot of the stories of just his very, very seriousness to the art. Um, um, one of the first uh, really huge lengthy drum solos in rock is the song called Toad by Cream. If you uh, get an opportunity to please check that out, uh, please do. Um, if you, it, on the Wheels of Fire uh, live album, definitely is a um, just, just really, really big drum solo. And you could kind of see where a lot of people got a lot of their uh, influence. Um, Ginger Baker was a huge influence on a lot of different drummers, which is which is always really cool. Um, you know, you could really just go ahead and and start to um, what's the word I'm looking for? Start to 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 piece together just a lot of different stuff, which is what we're going to do here. We're not going to kind of go through the years here. We're just going to start throwing kind of different drummers out at you, which is uh, always really interesting. Um, you know, you're looking sometimes for something a little bit simple. And and sometimes, you know, when you're looking into punk, it's not simple. I, I don't want to say it like it's like easy. It's simple in the fact that your drum kit isn't maybe as, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, it, it's not as, as big and complicated as maybe a Ginger's Baker's might be. Um, but uh, I was listening to the other day, uh, the My Chemical Romance. It's not the, it's just my chemical romance. I don't know why I said, uh, what's th um, the, the, but, uh, welcome to the black parade. This, uh, song, um, the beginning of it, the drums kind of had me thinking that sometimes just some simpleness could be go really well within a song. <laughs> when I hear something like that, like just that drum that, that, that drum roll right there that, that that's going on. I think about playing in front of big audiences and keeping time and, and really soon coming up, we're going to have uh, some drummers on the show 
I'm going to ask these questions a little bit more of like, what is it like to kind of, uh, you know, have this pressure on you in these big situations to keep time like that. But I guess if you're practicing it or you're just really good at your job, I guess that's what would make you a really awesome drummer. Um, currently, if you have a chance on the screen right here is Terry Bazio, um, who's played with so many different artists. Like uh, he's played with Frank Zappa. Um, he played with Missing Persons, which again, his kit wasn't this big, but you could see here on the symbol on this track. Um, you know, he, he kind of, he was doing something a little bit different. I try to think a little bit what, what, uh, in the eighties, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Could you really be a, uh, like one of those flashy drummers like Ginger Baker? But there's Terry Bazio, who was in the 70s. It seemed in the 80s he could kind of tone, his, tone, his, tone it down a little bit on a track, some tracks. And, and honestly, that's what also makes a good drummer. Um, being able to sit and be able to tone it down, okay? Um, not, not, not easy to do by any, any way, shape or form, um, toning it down when you're a drummer, I can't imagine. Um, again, a lot of it, you you sit there and say, you know, it's about rhythm. Um, sometimes a lot of artists, it's about maybe it just heaviness. Um, here, here's really, really heavy is a uh, Meshaga here. Uh, if you have not had a chance to listen to Mashaga and you want to hear some really awesome drums and just awesome all around, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, Thomas Hakey, um, I think I pronounced it uh, hopefully um, correctly there. I tried to uh, to to practice some of these before we go uh, go on air, and then as we're getting here, um, but then again, his polymeters and technical ability is. Uh, some people have called him, uh, he's in the top five of modern metal drummers. And you could hear in that song, just a lot of complication going on in the, in the, in the foot department. Um, not an easy thing to do, um, but uh, he seems to do it. Um, another artist that uh, seems to not uh, make it look easy is Danny Carey of Tool. like Danny Carey of Tool, I, I really am always excited to see what he's going to be coming out with next because uh, honestly, he's got big drum sounds and honestly, as he goes and goes, it gets better and better. And uh, honestly, this new album, uh, Fear Inoculum, um, a lot of people say, oh, it's those good, it's those good, but some of the drum parts from him are like, wow, definitely really, really awesome and really, really cool. Um, you know, back to Ginger Baker, uh, you know, a big fan of Cream and a big uh, awesome drummer, probably could even said better than Ginger Baker is one Neil Pert of Rush. Wow, that's a kit. And honestly, we could talk about Rush forever, but honestly, just saying, you know what? Um, being able to use like a xylophone and being able to use these different parts on the drums is really what made Neil really awesome. And just honestly, his musical rhythms and his musical just know-how of wanting to do some, some different stuff was just, I just think it's really, 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 really cool. Um, always cool is also in the rock world. You've heard of your Motley Crue spinning drums, a uh, Slipknot. Joey Jordison, man, that guy could play some drums, and he, his drum set did some really awesome stuff. You can't see right there, it's spinning on its side. Oh, my Lord. If you could go online in any of these videos, you could watch the full video and really, really, really get into it, is which what I love to do. Um, but, uh, again, just really cool to... Um, see these kits and and see the, this 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 uh what's the word i'm looking for and if you know if you're looking at the screen that's joy jordison um his drum kit just really really seems to be something that to me again back to the drum roll part seemed to be really tough to uh, manage you know just getting behind the kit and keeping all these crazy times and you know ginger baker just 
keep cool faces and looking cool without looking scared, I think is probably half of the job uh, too. If you really sit down and you really, uh, really think about it. But uh, you know, some of the, you know, t- Tim Alexander of Primus is another excellent example of, of somebody who really knows how to set the jam. Good drum roll around the whole set is something that I really always enjoyed. And every friend I have who plays the drums is always something that you're looking for. And always what you're looking for is a little fun. And honestly, uh, if you've ever gotten a chance, go and check out this full clip. But uh, Questlove, who's another great drummer in the Roots, and he's been amazing on Jimmy Fallon. And honestly, this is really good. And another great drummer is comedian Fred Amerson. It's just them having a little bit of fun, having some fun behind the drum kit. always like to have a little bit of fun and uh that was really cool to kind of look deeper um into some of these um just just drum parts not even drummers in a whole because we could spend a whole episode on quest love just by himself or ginger baker 17 episodes and i'm sure down the line we may do that but just always on, on a hot summer day you need to have some drum rolls to, to, to kind of keep you going when you go out to that steakhouse and you want some some something to, on the side, you know, don't ask for dinner rolls, ask for drum rolls. Ba-do-tsh. But again, um, really, really awesome to uh, go uh, deep into uh, different, different, different stuff like uh, Ginger Baker. I don't know why I haven't talked about Ginger Baker yet here. Um, just like this next artist, I don't know why we've never talked about uh, this next artist in which I'm about to bring out here, and that's uh, the Weather Report. Look at these guys on the screen. If you're watching live, man, these guys have an outfits that uh, I wish currently right now for this show I was wearing because it would really, really make for really awesomeness. But again, we're not here to talk about clothing. Um, we're here to talk about just really, 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 really another band with a great, great musicians. Um, um, Joe Joe Z on uh, vocals, uh, Wayne Shorter. Um, Mirzalov Vitos, uh, Alfonso Mozon, Ereto Mora. Oh man, there's just so many artists who've played through this um, artist. But we're gonna we're going to focus here on um, <laughs> we're gonna focus on a little bit of uh, Joe Joe Z here, and I don't want to mispronounce his name, and I've tried it's Joe Zawenel. Um, just really awesome musician. And really, honestly, this is a band that, again, I can't believe we're just talking about them, um, for the first time, really a little bit more and because of just their influence on on music in general. Um, and if you haven't listened to the jazz fusion band, which is weather report, um, definitely, 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 definitely should be on your list. Jocko Pastorius got to spend, uh, got to spend some time in the weather report, 76 to 81. Um, Honestly, the work that he made with the Weather Report is definitely um, work that is regarded as as, as really some of the best. Um, we could spend, again, another episode just on the Weather Report, which I'm going to try to find somebody to do that eventually because their catalog is huge. And honestly, just the way they've influenced many, many different artists is, is really the reason why I like digging into this. And, and honestly... Um, in, in the in the in the uh, in the department of of even funk, there's there's they got funk going on, but all worked under the labels of jazz, um, you know. Um, but then as as their uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Wayne Shorter and Joe Z were pretty much partners in crime in this, and you know, throughout everyone else, kind of was a little bit of a revolving door, staying for maybe four or five years. But these two definitely. Um, you know, it, it made this this band who it was. And if you're not familiar with Wayne Shorter, uh, we're going to both artists really quick. Um, he is uh, a saxophonist, a definitely amazing composer. Um, definitely could play his instruments really, really well and write some really, really great music. Sadly passed away uh, last year in 2023 at the age of 89. So, I mean, these guys... We're able to live and able to live a full life. Uh, Joe Z, um, he passed away at 75 in 2007. You know, and you're thinking about if he was still alive right now, okay, he would be 
you know, where, where you'd be almost in his 90s. And man, him playing his electric piano and synthesizer and then the, the, the uh, it's just the, uh, you know, he, he won best electric keyboards 28 times by the Reader's Downbeat magazine. That's nuts. Um, but you're looking for something really cool. You're looking for something to fusion it up. I'd say check into a little bit of weather report, especially, you know, on a hot day. Might cool you down. Check that weather report. Um, Bobby Womack, understanding. Uh, man, another artist who we I, I love a lot. There was a time period about 10 years ago where I spent the whole summer just listening to Bobby Womack. So I decided let's 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 look a little bit deeper into uh understanding, which you know, I know I brought up on the show before, but uh, just just a really uh, a track that I really, really, really want to uh, talk about. Just just one track. If, if we're going to talk about any tracks, is the "I Can Understand It" track. Um, oh man, this song is uh, over six minutes, and it is um, it is it is is cooking. It is cooking. Um, it is has a very very funky James Brown esque style of delivery. Not to take anything away from uh, Mr. Bobby Womack because I love Bobby just as much as I love um, James Brown. But uh, it's the lead off track from Understanding. Go ahead and pick that up on this uh, on a hot summer day and really hear all the instruments going. And then at the end, there's just just Bobby asks a question. He asks if you could just give him a second to, to do a couple guitar licks. Give him that second. He he deserves it in the song. But it's a really, 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 really awesome. Um, last week we uh checking back in. Um, you know, we're always gonna do a little something here called uh checking back in with the double groove. And tonight's back in checking go groove is last week we talked about screaming trees, uh sweet oblivion. Um, man, I cannot stop listening to this album. I had to do a lot of yard work the other day outside, blasted this in my ears. Just a good vocal delivery by Mark Lanigan. Um, but again, we talked about that last week. Um, but going through this track list, Shadows of the Season, a really great kickoff, uh, Nearly Lost You, we've talked about on the show before. But then you just start going and going, and like Dollar Bill, awesome, Butterfly, awesome. Um, great, great ending in Julie uh, Paradise. I've even able, as you can see here on the screen, there's a... a a whole album full of bonus tracks if you're able to check that out but um have not been disappointed in screaming trees and i'm just a little bit upset at myself that i have not um, been able to listen to them just a little bit more in depth um which you would think that being somebody who is uh a, a huge fan of, of awesome music that i would just have been just 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 take it just a little bit more time to find just how awesome the screaming trees are but you know what um that that's okay okay um that's all right and and the real reason it's all right is because uh we're gonna do a little bit of an encore here and you're like an encore an encore over what we're gonna do a little bit of an encore over awesome drummers and you know what we were just talking about some earlier and throughout the show we're gonna talk about different members of different bands and mike borden drummer of faith no more is definitely 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 an awesome uh an awesome drummer nicknamed puffy which was not familiar with before doing this show. Always thought it was awesome because his trademark look where had the awesome dreadlocks. Um, of course, mentioned before Angel Dust by Faith No More was my first album. But he's just played with so many, so many, so many um, cool things. Um, did not know until doing this that he played with Cliff Burton of Metallica and Easy Street. Um, also played with uh, Ozzy Osbourne. Um, with Jason Newstead and Robert Trujillo and Jerry Cantrell uh, with Robert Trujillo. Just, he's been involved in so many, so many great things. Um, sat in with Korn um, for uh, seven months, over a over hundred shows, you know? Kudos to you, Mike Borden. Kudos to you for being an awesome drummer and really sitting in and when people need you. Um, he usually plays Yamaha um, and O Custom. Um, he, his head's a Remo. Um, uh, we have a how rack and stand. Um, but like I said, check out the if you're looking outside of the whole entire uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Check out uh, the whole entire Faith in the More catalog. Check out the great degradation trip. Um, awesome, awesome solo album with uh, Jerry Cantrell, who I uh was uh, very, very lucky um to again see him play with Faith No More live. So you cannot take away the amazingness of the Faith No More with. 
Mike Borden. Just like you can take away of the awesomeness of this band, Canned Heat. How I mean, often are you going to hear all these artists talked about on one show? You know, not very often. You're not going to hear this. And, uh, well, here's a little Canned Heat. Come on, let's work together. You know together we will stand. Canned Heat. When I think Canned Heat, I think of, well, my dad playing Canned Heat. So many awesome songs. Um so many great songs that make you remember um, going up the country on the road again, as you just heard there, let's work together. Um, remember hearing my, uh, just, just hearing my dad talk about these guys and just the blues and the style in which they were just, just so, 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 so stacked with. Um, Canned Heat from 1967 debut, just, just really, really, really kind of kicks it off. Boogie with Canned Heat, just another awesome, 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 um, awesome band um some of the members in there um alan wilson um nicknamed the blind owl um he was uh the lead singer on two of their biggest hits the on the road again and going up the country um passed away in 1970 at the age of 27 you may not be familiar with this um he was a friend uh um really just a friend to a lot um just a really great guitar player um, just sadly, um, played, played just, just really, really awesome. But sadly he suffered from anxiety, um, in a time period where I think it was a little bit, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Not as like, let's talk about it. Um, you know, Bob Hyde, who is the lead singer that you heard of seeing the song there, he was at, at a time placed, um, in, in, in a care. Um, some even believe that, you know, he, he a lot of times struggled with social situations, but just really awesome to see that he was able to create this music under some of the, this guys, um, you know, he just, um, he just really just kind of wanted to just not, he wanted to make music, but not be part of the world in which the music he was in, um, you know, but again, just really, really sad. Um, but uh, again, he passed away way too soon, way too soon, you know, and, and when artists pass, pass away in the amazing, you know, in the amazing uh, world where you, you just got all this great stuff going on, it's really sad. Bob Hyde passed away too in 81 at age 38. But all that being said, go back and dig into uh, their, their albums because you're not going to uh, want to miss out by listening to Canned Heat because uh, definitely that uh, output that we talked about there is definitely really good. Living the Blues is uh, definitely awesome. Um, definitely good stuff on there. My Mistake, Pony Blues, Tell Me Man Blues, really, really, really good. Though after, uh, what's his name, um, what, after Alan Wilson, um, passed away the band kind of lost a little bit some of its you know its luster and and they did a little bit of this and a little bit of that and some of the touring that you see but you know one of those members that i mentioned are in the band but again uh check out some canned heat uh check out uh anything that we talked about tonight and if you got any questions on any of the awesome stuff that we talked about do not be afraid to send us a line down here um, at uh, the hookup on music because we love talking about music. If you'd like to ever be a part of music, if you'd like to be a part of any of this, we thank you so much, so much for coming on here. We thank you, we thank you, we thank you, we thank you. My name is Tony. Go back and check out some of those drummers' full performances. Go back and check out some of that new uh, music, Fountains uh, DC, not Fountains of Wayne, Fountains DC. Uh, check out uh, that new Decemberist. Check out Canned Heat. Check out Weather Report. Listen to Mike Borden. Um, thank you so much for joining us uh, tonight. We will be back again next week with our 75th episode. Can't believe it when I say it like that. I love talking music with you guys. Everybody out there, I hope you guys will stay cool. And uh, we definitely will be talking to you again soon. And uh, by soon, I mean the soon as this album is done spinning. Everyone take care out there. Have a good rest of your week. Oh, 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 oh,